In this lesson, the first in the unit on the Industrial Revolution, we are going to take a look at the causes behind the economic and industrial growth in the late 1800s, specifically between the periods 1870 and 1910. The first, the first reason behind our tremendous industrial growth was the fact, and is the fact, that our nation is blessed with natural resources to fuel that growth. First up at the time, were the coal mines which provided power for the steam engines of the times. You can see here the steam engines on the left which were attached to the railroads and the steam engines which were in the factories in the photo on the right. Coal provided the power for both of those. Lumber. Thick forests were cut into lumber for construction. And lastly, oil was discovered in Pennsylvania in 1859. A second reason is our growing workforce. And specifically, you can see here, in the late 1800s, we had large numbers of immigrants arriving from countries in Europe. Thirdly, our free market economic system, called capitalism, encourages entrepreneurs. People that want to start businesses are encouraged under our system. And we see three industrialists here that started businesses. Cornelius Vanderbilt on the left started the New York Penn Central Railroad. John Rockefeller started Standard Oil Company. And Andrew Carnegie started the Carnegie Steel Company. All three men were highly successful, and we'll be talking about all of them in future lessons in this unit. Lastly, we need to talk about the policies of the United States government at the time. There are two in particular. One, protective tariffs. Tariffs are a tax on imports, and this encourages us to buy American goods by making foreign goods more expensive. Additionally, the government had a laissez-faire policy, which is roughly translates to hands-off. In other words, the government stayed out of regulating businesses, allowing businesses to do as they felt best for their own growth, without government involvement. Something else the government did was create a situation through patents for inventors to innovate. A government patent gives someone approximately 20 years to have exclusive rights to do with whatever they so choose with their invention, ideally to make as much money off of it as they possibly can. In this particular drawing, you're looking at Thomas Edison's patent for the electric light. And Thomas Edison, in particular, developed over a thousand different objects at his labs here in Menlo Park, New Jersey. He had a lot. Of, he had a number of people that worked for him. Received patents for the movie camera that you see at the top of the picture, the light bulb that he is holding in the picture on the left. Make these a little bit larger. And what you're looking at on the right is a phonograph, a Victrola, which is a precursor to our, your modern day CD player or MP3 player. In the case of all three of these inventions, they spurred industries. The audio recording led to the recording industry. Movie or video recording led to the Hollywood movie industry. And of course, the light bulb uh, revolutionized business by allowing workers to work uh, in areas where there was no natural light. The last thing we need to talk about in this lesson is the production of steel and the importance of steel. What Henry Bessemer did was create a process for making steel that improved upon the existing process. It involved blasting the main component of steel, which is iron, with air which would force out the impurities, creating a stronger steel. Steel is then used for 
uh, many products at the time producing railroads and of course the rails that the railroads run on and we'll be talking later in this unit about the development of skyscrapers and bridges as well all using steel as their main component all right then let's sum up the reasons for economic growth in the late 1800s our natural resources including coal our thick forests and the discovery of oil as well as I should have mentioned the iron ore deposits which we had in abundance the main component of steel our growing workforce apologies for the misspelling there in workforce we uh, millions of immigrants arrived from Europe which we will be talking about in the next unit in particular the entrepreneurs that capitalism encouraged people who invested money in a product or enterprise in order to make a profit it's essentially the definition of entrepreneur and we looked at three Carnegie Rockefeller and Vanderbilt we'll talk about some others later in the unit as well like JP Morgan they established factories railroads mines all of which created jobs and the government policies specifically protective tariffs and governments laissez-faire or hands-off policies in terms of minimal to no business regulation additionally patents led to innovation and inventors like Thomas Edison to create new products that led to new industries and the production of steel very important also for a number of different industries during this time period and that does it